good morning students we have completed uh, our topic previous topic regarding the properties of halogen till the uh, melting point of isomeric halogens now today i would like to discuss about the dipole moment now if i talk about dipole moment as i have already told you in the class the dipole moment which is designated here by mu that is equal to the product of magnitude of charge and the distance between the two charges as is shown here it is equal to the product of the magnitude of the charge and the distance between the charges now in the case of haloalkanes with the increase in electronegativity as we know that fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine then comes your bromine and then comes your iodine so highest electronegativity is of fluorine so that means the maximum charge acquired is in the case of fluorine but here the size of fluorine is very small so that will create an effect on the distance and that in turn will affect your dipole moment so in the case of fluorine the small size of fluorine outweighs the effect of electronegativity that means the effect of size is more pronounced in the case of fluorine in comparison to the charge so that is why the dipole moment is unexpectedly less in case of alkyl fluoride in comparison to alkyl chloride again i am repeating this thing that if we consider only electronegativity then the dipole moment of this methyl fluoride should be more but here in this case it is less than alkyl fluoride the reason is the small size of fluorine is more uh, is creating more effect on the dipole moment than the charge got it so this is a very important point this is an exceptional question which can come in the exam if i talk about the haloarenes if you see haloarenes if i compare their dipole moment this is para dichlorobenzene this is ortho dichlorobenzene and this is meta dichlorobenzene if you see dipole moment of para dichlorobenzene that is zero why it is zero because if you see two chlorines are just opposite to each other or both side being symmetrical the resultant dipole moment of this and this it cancels out and the resultant dipole moment comes out to be zero if you talk about the ortho and meta uh, dichlorobenzene so in the case of ortho the bond angle between these two chlorine that is 60 degree and here the bond angle is 120 degree right so the dipole moment can be indicated in the form of arrow like this which gets added up and the dipole moment resultant dipole moment will be 2.54 d by if you talk about here then the resultant dipole moment can be calculated as a resultant of these two vectors and it comes out to be 1.72 because the bond angle is 120 degree so it is having less dipole moment bond angle here is 60 degree so both the dipole moments the resultant will be more and it will be 2.54 d by also uh, the question regarding this can come that why your para dichloro benzene is having zero dipole moment so in this you need to draw the structure and uh, explain the same that the two dipoles this one and this one tends to give the output resultant as zero and that is why the resultant dipole moment will be zero now i'm coming to the next property that is the solubility i have already told you in the 10th class that like 10th as well as in 11th also like dissolve like 
if it if the substance is polar that will be soluble in polar solvents if you talk about haloalkanes and haloarenes here we come across cx bond which is polar in nature as you already know in both the cases if you talk about alkyl halide then also it is polar if you talk about aryl halides then also the cx bond is polar in nature that means it will be acquiring slight negative charge and slight positive charge here slight negative charge and slight positive charge here so this is the polar molecule whereas if we talk about the water molecule again it is polar oxygen being electronegative requires negative charge and hydrogen being uh, electropositive requires the uh, slight positive charge now um, less electronegative hai, that means it will be requiring slight positive charge if you see for any substance to get dissolved if i talk about alkyl halide suppose you want to dissolve alkyl halide in water then you need to energy to break this bond between c and x energy will be required at the same time yeah when your this alkyl halide will be interacting with water at that time due to the interaction energy will be released same is with the case of aryl halides when aryl halide you will be dissolving it in water the energy is required to break the cx bond at the same time when this alkyl halide will be interacting with water energy will be released now this energy which is released during the interaction of alkyl halide with water or aryl halide with water is not sufficient to overcome the energy which is required to break these bonds cx bonds this energy is not that much sufficient to overcome the uh, this your energy which is required to break this rx bond or cx bond which is present in the aryl halide so because of that your this alkyl or aryl halides they are not soluble in water after being polar also they are not soluble in water they are soluble in organic solvents like benzene less polar solvents like ether so they are soluble in that so this again one question can come regarding the solubility that being polar why they are not soluble in water there you they, there you need to explain this energy concept that the energy released during the interaction is not sufficient in comparison to the energy which is required to cleave cx bond in aryl halide or cx bond in alkyl halide now coming to the stability or strength of cx bond strength of cx bond that depends strength means how easily you break that cx bond if the size of x that is the halogen if it is large enough obviously the cx bond length will be more and the bond will be easy to break if the size of x will be small that is if the halogen is small like fluorine then the cx bond length will be small and the cx bond will be difficult to break so that is why if you if we compare in terms of size and then you compare in terms of the energy which is required to cleave then cf bond is more stable because being smaller fluorine the cx bond in length is less and energy will be required to cleave this bond and that is why it will be more stable than ccl than cbr and then c i hope these concepts regarding the physical properties they are clear to you now i am switching to the very important concept regarding the chemical properties of hello alkenes i'll be starting with this first we will do of hello alkenes also but first we will be starting with hello alkenes hello alkenes undergo three type of reactions nucleophilic substitution reactions elimination reactions and reactions with metal one by one we will be discussing each category of reaction nucleophilic substitution again i'm repeating it nucleophilic substitution reaction elimination reaction reaction with metals so one by one we will be discussing each of them first i will be taking nucleophilic substitution reaction 
before i discuss with you that nucleophilic reactions first of all i want to discuss with you about nucleophile nucleophile we have already done in your 11th class again i am repeating the same nucleophile means nucleus loving species if it is a nucleus loving species then we know that nucleus in nucleus what is there protons protons carry positive charge that means nucleus is positive charge so positive charge loving species positive charge always indicates deficiency of electron that means the species which i am talking about is having either excess of electrons that is in the form of lone pair or they must be carrying negative charge because of that excess of electrons so any species which is having excess of electrons either in the form of lone pair or in the form of extra electrons indicated as negative charge they are the nucleophiles right so nucleus loving species now here i have uh, written one reaction so here your this nucleophile now if you see 